In January of 1781, the famed Brigadier General Daniel Morgan, subject of our next episode of Washington's Best, had marched a small force into the west of South Carolina to boost the morale of local American sympathizers while foraging supplies for the greater Southern Army. The British were made aware of this move but incorrectly believed that Morgan's plans were to capture Fort 96, a strategically important stronghold garrisoned by South Carolinian loyalists. General Cornwallis sent infamous cavalry commander Lieutenant Colonel Lord Bannister Tarleton to foil this attempt at compromising the British left flank. Once Tarleton learned that this was not Morgan's intent, he bolstered his force and pursued the rebels into the backwoods of South Carolina. Morgan decided to make his stand near Broad River. He positioned on two small hills showing most of his force. Knowing his foe's aggressive tendency, Morgan devised a trap to lure the British into a double envelopment, the first and only time this tactic was used during the war. On January 17th, Tarleton's force of around 1,100 or so came upon Morgan's men at Cowpens. Tarleton was presented with a force comparable to his own. Morgan had presented the majority of his militia in his center, while positioning his professional troops behind the second line. Hundreds of Continentals, including his famed riflemen, were hidden behind the slight hills on the Cowpens. The force Tarleton saw was closer to the number of his force and mostly made up of militia. Tarleton had little respect for the militia and may have assumed Morgan positioned them in the center simply to keep them from fleeing right away. This was not the case, as Morgan had a plan. He instructed the militia in the front to skirmish with the entirely professional British force for two shots a man and then flee. When Tarleton saw the militia fleeing, he signaled for a full charge. His thought was that the militia would haphazardly run through the continental lines behind them, causing disorder, and this would be an easy victory. However, as the militia tactically retreated, the Continentals opened up orderly, allowing them to pass through, and the third line of state and Continental troops moved up. The near entirety of the Crown's men were opened up on by a wall of fire, causing extreme casualties. Worse for the Brits, they were now stuck between two hills. Simultaneously, the two hidden units crashed down on both flanks. I believe the famed riflemen were among these forces, devastating the prone British lines with accurate rifle fire from the side. At the same time, a cavalry charge swooped around into the rear of the British force, engaging the rear of Tarleton's advanced troops and crashing into his reserves, the 71st Highlanders. The British were surrounded in the only double envelopment maneuver recorded in the entire war. Around 200 and 300 British troops escaped, including Tarleton. Those who did most likely found a way out along the river. Over 800 Redcoats were killed, wounded, or captured. The Americans suffered only 99 wounded and 25 killed. This was one of the most storied victories in the entire war and proved that a comparable force of Americans could stand up to a professional British unit in the Southern Theater.